This podcast is brought to you by real women. Real women for your hot dog, not hot dogs dressed as buns. Now back to your scheduled broadcast. <laughs> Hello, it's <laughs> Cat Chats. Oh, hello. Wait, we have to cheers. Cheers. Because it's Angie's Cinco safe de Mayo. return. Oh, it's Cinco de Mayo, and it's Angie's safe return from Boston. Boston. Yay. How was the trip? It was really good. Thank you for these drinks. I've already downed one and almost the next. She one. went to Boston, and she was texting me like all night, one, one of the nights, about like, oh my God, I had a hurricane. I had a hurricane. I was like, what the fuck? Fuck. Bar dress. Yes. Oh my. Okay. Oh God. Okay. So Angie. Oh God. Okay. Just can we um, can we do the intro before I like leave so the podcast? <laughs> oh my God. This is Boston. Yeah. So hurricanes, and I'm gonna make these because this might be the new signature drink of 2023. I think it might be. I think it might be. It's delicious. Oh, it's so good. Like some rum, some passion fruit. Some other little somethings. Lemon sugars. juice. We got, I, it's, well, it's supposed to be passion fruit syrup. I used liquid cane sugar instead because we can perfect. find any. It tastes amazing. And it was super funny because like everywhere that I went after and asked for a hurricane, was a, like the first time I got one, I was at the House of Blues and it was like a super like dirty hurricane. Oh, so cool. And then everywhere else was like, oh, we don't really have everything to make one, but I can make you something like it. And then by the end of the trip, it was basically just asking for rum and pineapple juice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, that's literally what happened with our gin lemonades. Like, it was just like, we were, we started, I, when we first started doing gin lemonades back in 2020 during the pandemic, I was trying to be fancy with basil oh, and so like a true. lemon slice and I was trying to use apple juice and different versions. Eventually right. we just got so lazy and so dirty. I was, we were just yeah. like, just give me a bottle of gin and give me some lemonade yeah. and we mixed it together. And I was like, that's it. The kitty well, junk. And I'm like, oh my God. And then oh, last no. night you were just pouring cups of gin. Yeah, I was just like gin and lemonade. Yeah, oh just God. I just go to Bevmo, <laughs> pick up a bottle of gin, get some lemonade, and put that together. It's adorable. So this I podcast is going to be a little bit late, you guys. We're sorry. Angie's safe return from Boston is more yep. important. Me. But so are you. And so that's why we are glad to bring you this next podcast episode. Cat Chat. This one is going to be called... Our Bodies, Our Choices. Our Body, Our Choice. We are talking... <laughs> well, I don't know what it's going to be called. I'll label it later. But it's about abortions. About abortions rights. and trans rights and women's rights. Like, mm-hmm. we're so sick and tired of the bullshit. Yeah, so, like, go this is going to be, like, a lot to unpack. I still want to keep it funny, so don't worry about that. It's going to be fun. But this is some deep shit, y'all. It's been getting crazy, and I don't even know where to start. So I think what kicked it off was the the leaked documents basically outlining that the Supreme Court would be overturning Roe versus Wade, which allows safe abortion, right? Allows, you know, a woman's right to choose and have the procedure done. And I think it what happened following was really depressing so many women and and allies and everyone just really coming together in support and then a lot of detractors who were quote pro-life and up in everybody's business and like oh well if you don't want a baby don't get pregnant and immediately putting the blame on women like oh so it's just a woman's fault and her problem then if she has no right to her own body or her own choice yeah, but it's just because, like, the women are so taboo, such the goddess. I was like, mm-hmm. what about the responsibilities of men? Like, mm-hmm. that's never talked about. And I think that's so curious. It's like, where are the responsibilities of men? Mm-hmm. Whether it's men in the government or just men out there on the street, the ones who are mm-hmm. doing all kinds of just disgusting things to women. And I think that it's really overlooked. Like, it's not just oh, a woman hooked up with somebody one night and she was lazy, you know, didn't use birth control and then she got pregnant once an abortion. Like, we don't talk about ectopic pregnancies, you know, pregnancies that happen outside of the uterus that can literally threaten a woman's life if she goes forward with the pregnancy. Um, Or any... Any and rape, I think, rape, like, rape. Yeah, I think those were like the those two rape and the unwanted pregnancies were the mm-hmm. two bigger ones. But there was uh, there was another woman on my Facebook who posted about. I was like, there's so many other situations that are simpler than that that mm-hmm. still also aren't protected. Whether yeah. like a woman not in her best interest of her body, her body's health. Yep. And I was like, oh well, you're the mom and. You're supposed to be sacrificed for the baby anyway. Exactly. So that's, I was like, well, good luck. That's your fate. So we're going to save this baby and it might kill you, but that's it. Yeah. 
Exactly. Things like that. Like there's like, and not, not, I said that I was simpler. I guess that's maybe not simpler, but like I think the cases that are getting blown up are like mm-hmm. the big things that are tied to more serious matters like domestic violence that mm-hmm. lead into rape mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah, and I really just hate that it the pressure and blame is always put on the woman. So it's oh, it's her fault if she got pregnant, as if she was alone in the matter. <laughs> Like, oh, no one else had anything to do with it there. And it's really hurtful. It's painful as a woman to go through, you know, I don't have a uterus. My limb was removed. And people know this because we posted about it so many times. And it was on my when limb. Back, back when we were doing the video cat chats, mm-hmm. we had us, we were doing the pussy poots. Pussy poots. And we, <laughs> yes, which, oh my God, we need to order more pussy poots. We do need to order more pussy poots. <sighs> that was so good, pussy poots. <laughs> anyway, anyway, and it ties into all, yeah, endo. And like, there's, mm-hmm. I know a handful of women right now who are dealing with endo right now. Yeah. And Angie was one of them. Yeah. And it's so serious. And even like through my 20s, when doctors wouldn't believe me, by the way, that I was in any pain or it was just like a woman's problem or, oh, you know, just women have periods and they're painful and like that's how life goes. So just deal with it. And that's yeah. younger, especially when you get older. I was like, my yeah. mom, my mom was way past um, childbearing mm-hmm. when she got the cancer in her uterus, mm-hmm. and they still removed it, but it still took over her entire body. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of variables here, of yeah. course, but I do think that in essence, what happened was a lot of doctors were just like, "Oh, it's just your uterus. Yeah. We're definitely not going to take it out, even though you're past mm-hmm. like oh, you're past God. childbirthing." So it's just like, and- I was like, just take it out of me, get it the fuck out. And people are they're just like, "No, no, no, you're going to deal with it." And she's like, "I'm having pain." And the mm-hmm. next thing you know, they're like, "Oh." We just did a cat scan. We just did yeah, a scan, and actually, exactly. that's 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 it's not. It's actually cancer. Oh, so now we're gonna take that out of you because it's literally killing you. That is what is heartbreaking because it goes hand in hand with abortion rights. It's women's rights and knowledge over our own bodies. So with endometriosis, it took doctors ten years to finally take me seriously. That I was in enough pain to warrant the belief that I wasn't actually going to have kids and I didn't want to have kids. So they would take my uterus out, but it took repeatedly going to the doctor over 10 years for them to kind of sort of believe that I knew my body better than they did. And that's what's really depressing is that the choice was not mine. It's bullshit. And I also know a woman right now who's pregnant at my work. I'm not going to say anything about her or her name, but I will say that she's been calling out so her jobs might be in jeopardy because she because the job we work at is not technically like there's no care for it. Mm-hmm. Also on top of that, she has said that she's been to multiple doctors and they've all said different things and mm-hmm. she's not getting the care she needs. She's having reactions with her body that the doctors are more caring about the baby than her yeah. actual like day-to-day symptoms, how yeah. she's feeling. And I mean, and she wants to be taken care of. She's like, I like they, they're not doing anything for me. They just want to make sure this baby somehow gets healthy, even if it means that if I'm still miserable, but the baby's okay, that part doesn't matter. Like it's like, yeah, there, there should be like this goddess selflessness where it's just like, and while the man's <laughs> yeah, just exactly. like, the man's over there like, hey, give me another IPA because my wife's pregnant. I'm going to hang out here and make sure she's okay and stuff, but I'm fine. Like nobody actually okay, cares. Nobody cares about the babies. Like they care while it's kind of this abstract concept. Let's be real. No one's over here like paying for the babies when they're outside of the womb, paying for maternity care, paying for hospital bills, college funds, by the way, food. I mean, okay, so a woman is like, it's all about the baby inside of her, but then when it's outside of her, she's the welfare mom. Yes, and also this ties into the next segment kind of that I wanted to talk about. It's kind of like, it it doesn't go right into trans care, but also goes into, there has been a significant silence about trans masculine people, trans men, men who get pregnant, and you, mm-hmm. you never see this. You never t- hear about it. You never talk about it. And why is that? Does anyone have the answer? Yeah. That, why why do you not ever hear about trans men? And even when a trans man goes in to have his pregnancy, they're, yeah. they're shunned, they're laughed at, or they're misgendered a lot. And that causes so much mental distress while they're just trying to conceive this baby. They have, they have to deal with just like scrutiny. It ties into other trans issues. Like, I mean, trans men are very important, especially in, in reference with pregnancy, but it goes to the same thing where I remember reading a thing about a trans woman who needed an ER, pulled her pants down, saw something and they let her die there on, on the ground. See, They just let her die. And this is all because of like propaganda and just fear mongering and just like, like not safe care for LGBT people. Or people of color either. Mm -hmm. Or what women are and are not supposed to be doing with their bodies. Exactly. 
like exactly. by and large and how we're represented in the media and how how much attention by the way like, is given to women's bodies is gross it's actually really, it's really gross i know and i've it's actually weird. there's been so many people that where when a trans man's having a pregnancy where the doctors talk to his friends instead of him because he's having a pregnancy but the women are around him are so like oh well no like I respect my friend's choices, but his family disowned him. That's why I'm here. And the doctors will still talk. Like, it'll, it'll still become like this, like, like this, it's still like the feminism still gets into it. And I don't know how this, I can't, sp- I, I can't speak for trans men, but I've had friends who felt like this. And I know these experiences are real where it's just like, that's in the, like the whole time. It's like a swirl of emotions. Yeah. These trans men never get out of the hospital the same way. They become, oh God, they become just. I would be extremely bitter. It would, it, would, it fucks you up. It fucks you up hard. But it does remind me, you know, like the fact that doctors are talking to his friends more or like female friends more. The reverse for for like women who go in, classically speaking, to hospitals and like to business meetings, they'll talk to men. They'll talk to people around her as yeah. if she's not like in charge of her own words or well, her own choices. And sometimes, and I will know that some some trans men will mm-hmm. still be with men, and so mm-hmm. that will happen. Like, and then and then the doctor. Those there are situations like that where I've where I've seen or heard where a doctor will come in and be like, "Oh, wait, so, oh, so this is your husband?" And then the oh no. and the man will be like, "Yeah, this is this is my husband." And then they'll be like, "Oh." Okay, so tell me a little bit about her, or tell me a little bit about his. Yeah, situ- and it, that, that's where it starts, and it just gets. Yeah, and then it's just a whole. Oh, it's, that's just a mess. It's, oh, it's a mess. Oh God, that's so, so that, disappointing. There's, there's there's not enough care for these kind of situations. All while, like the government's like making yeah. laws and basis is off just mm-hmm. cis culture. Well, and or really- or healthcare is so. Yeah. Like, it's been the way that it's been, and that's not going to change. And that's been the detriment to so many people. And I, we were talking earlier, too, like, the media portrayal. It's interesting how much attention, like, you're right, has been given to trans women versus, like, trans men, trans masculinity. Yep. To a degree that it's physical. Like, when the media can take hold of something that can objectify trans women's body, like, sexualize bodies, then, all of a sudden, it's an objectification. And I feel like this is so close. And we said that we'd leave some comedy, so to, to interject <laughs> some comedy, that means that all those trans women and women become the butt end of society's oh, joke. no. And what goes in the butt? Yeah. What, what in the butt? Oh my god, that was from a South Park episode, by the way, that I love. Like, he's, oh my god. <laughs> okay, Butters. Is, I mean, he's like, Butters. He, it's like a parody of the of the video. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> and then Butters makes a music video, and it's so cute. I said what? What? In the butt. I said what? 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 <laughs> it's my butt. favorite. I said what? 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 In oh the butt. God. It's so cute. <laughs> oh my God, it's yes. super cute. I would listen to that just because I know it's Butters and that character I, is... Like, Butters is my Butters favorite. Butters is the best. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. And, okay, like, tangent super quick. <laughs> okay, so that, that was your scheduled comedy break. We <laughs> just back to the... No, no, no. Back to the main app. No, because <laughs> tangent, I saw the, like, newer South Park special, like, one of the specials, and it was Butters all grown up. And he was, like, the most slimy douchebag, like, salesman ever. And it was the best thing I've ever seen. It was just, like, using that kind of, like, innocent look that he has about him to reel people in and take their money. And I was just like, this is America. (laughs) So you snooze, you lose, the Mm -hmm. motherfucker. Yeah, basically. (laughs) Read it and we, oh, oh my god, yes. God. But yeah, this America. week has been really emotional. Um, it has been. Yeah, there's so many topics we're going to talk about. And even for me, I want to talk about the sleazy slime ball who I called out, the crocodile. I think a lot of you, that, I posted a video of me <gasps> calling that guy out, the crocodile. Oh my god. No one knows who it was about. I'm not going to say who it was about, but I will tell you this. I will tell you that some douchebag. I want to talk about that. Some douchebag literally and this is what I mean. This is how this is how damaging society is to these kind of people. Whether you are a non-binary or transnational person having a baby, or if you're scrutinized as a trans woman by the media, whatever it is, it's like people are trying to pretend like not only do we not exist, but that we have rights. And I'm like, no, we 
No, it is a fucking tragedy out here for these people <laughs> and for people oh of color. God, it's, it's a like fuck. Insane. It's or for people it's that from, from different incredible. from different countries. It's, it's yeah. And now, oh, cool. So uh, hands up for America. Hands up for America. Really? I was like, because it's a fucking shit show out here. It's a nightmare. But Some my, days, honestly. What happened was is that. I was minding my business. Literally, I woke up in the morning to a DM from mm. a strange guy that I don't know. Because mm. you know how it is with the DMs. Like, when you don't know them, it says message request. Mm-hmm. So I clicked on it. If you guys follow me on Facebook, a lot of you do. If you remember that meme that I shared, it was a guy standing looking in the mirror with a phone. Oh, no. With a, with a payphone in the mirror. And it was a joke talking about this is how people used to take selfies in the 90s. This guy took time out of his day to scroll through my pictures Find my photo, my old photos, Oof. take it, face swap it onto the meme of the male body and send it back to me with it headlined there. I fixed it. Boo. And I called you out the crocodile, you motherfucker. But I will say this to you. I was like, you're going to go down faster than me because that's bullshit. I was like, in the way that you treat these people, these small things happen to people mm-hmm. day in, day out. And this is why, like, on a personal basis, like, I don't talk about my life or the hardships I endure because I'm just going through living my life. A lot of these things, like I told mm-hmm. Angie before the podcast, a lot of the shit I shut out. Like, yeah. I don't have time you have for to. this. Yeah, you have to. Like, I don't have time for this bullshit. But yeah. when the time comes for me to talk about it, I'm going to because that's important. And there's a lot of people out that need to know out there that mm-hmm. you're valid and you are okay. And this happens to all of us. And the only way this is going to stop is mm-hmm. if we all band together and be like you need to shut the fuck up and stop this is not okay oh my god i was so i was so pissed i was shut and thank you angie for (sighs) standing up for me because oh my god immediately like they're blocked i she even took me i i I, I literally sent it to her and she, she was like what's wrong with this photograph i'm like look at the face i was like i literally was like not it didn't I, I couldn't understand what was happening for a second. I was like, who would do it's this? It's morbid, destructive like, humor. That's why when I sent it to her, she didn't know what it was from it. She's like, like, she's, who, like, she's like, what is this? Who's spending the time to do this? Who is this petty, jealous, hateful? Big, big, just big just fucking piece idiot. of shit. Like I, and not for nothing, like I know where they record their music. Do not think I wasn't about to like go oh, in there. No, 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 stop. Find Don't their address. And roll on by because I was about to. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's all it's all tied into the <laughs> same thing. Like, to. I mean, women's rights and like, I mean, and God, I was just scrolling about uh, a trans post where someone was like, some guy was talking. I blocked you too, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. He talked about how he's like, yeah. oh, he's like, as a guy, he's like, I have the right. I have the American right not to date a trans woman. And people, and then the comments oh, below the were comments disgusting. Made me sad. But, but the one comment that made me the most sick was another I'm woman sick. who came out and said, like, and lesbians shouldn't be bullied to date trans women either. And I'm like, is that what you say to your trans masculine friends who might have a crush on you? People were liking it. That was, yeah, I that's, was really surprised because yeah. I blocked them, but I didn't. First of all, there I have a lot no, of mutual friends, yeah, no. and that's scary. And that's, it was really scary, was like, yeah. Oh, and I was like, whoa. I don't, and I was like, ugh. that's really sick. And I was like, on top of that, I was like, that that girl who was talking about the lesbian, I'm like, so, yeah. so what about your trans man friend? What if yeah. he had a crush on you? Are you going to call him a freak and then do the same thing? And also, how come you're not, how come this post is always about trans women? You never that's see, what I'm saying. that's what I'm saying. You never see post about, what if a trans man likes you? Because all these women are yeah. fighting for each other. There's such, there's such compassion mm-hmm. for, feminist and that's why i love kitty junk and everything that we do for feminism because i was like when trans men transition the reason why you don't see them as hyped up in the media Mm -hmm. is because it's first of all i do think that it is still patriarchal and sexist because i think on the other side of the coin like it's not as easy to sexualize and objectify because once you have a female body like bing bang boom news cover just talk about literally talking about bodies we can now talk about your body Yep. Or in that, and that's even if you disclose if you're trans, because like, you know, a lot of slurs that people call trans women are traps because mm-hmm. it's like, oh, you tricked me. I'm not a gay man. Oh, fuck you. And then violence happens oh, where it's, it's, sense. it's different. It's different for, for trans men. I was like, trans men can get in a situation mm-hmm. with, with a man yeah. and correct me if I'm wrong. People on the podcast, feel free to, to message us, to talk to us about this or, or even shout it out on our Facebook. We'll talk about this with you. Correct us if I'm wrong. A lot of the times these trans masculine individuals will get into a situation with a man. They'll find out and the reverse will happen. Then they realize the body, they don't believe in trans. They don't believe oh, that. Right, and then course. it reverts back. No matter what this person thinks their identity is, even if this person thinks, mm-hmm. thinks quotes in quotes, thinks that mm-hmm. this person's a man in that male's mind, yep. it's still a female body in 
so that's they're when butch. the coin turns. Mm-hmm. They're the butch. That's when the coin turns. I was like, well, I'm still going to fuck you. And I'm that's still going to rape you. Yep. And I'm still going to beat the shit out of you. Happened to a friend of mine. And I'm, to me, again, that's like all a part of this patriarchal culture. Everything is revolves around sexualizing a woman's body or dismissing any personal freedom of bodily choice like women or men by the way and this is so interesting and i actually kind of want to also hear i would love to hear from the burlesque scene as well because really kitty was. junk is pro sex work mm-hmm. we are pro choice we are pro lgbt we are pro like we are pro everything mm-hmm. but it's very interesting it's only and like most more times than not it's only cis men Mostly, more times than not, cis white men who mm-hmm. have a so issue with controlling women's bodies, mm-hmm. whether it be abortion or their choice or their identity, and then also just being so violent towards trans women, and, and all which is in the all which is all which is within the realm of femininity and yeah, and, I and absolutely feminism. Agree. And I would say like women existing in the shadows, so in sex work or in like legalized prostitution in Nevada. Like the numbers are so clear, statistically speaking, that there's so much more protection offered when prostitution is legal. Like when there's a way to actually handle your business. If it's safe. Yeah. And if you actually wanted people to be safe, talk about like safe, you know, safe sex and safe pregnancies, by the way, yes, then it you. would be legal. And everyone's like, it's the same ridiculous argument about drugs. Like if it's legal, everybody's going to do it. Like that argument is stale. That, it doesn't yeah, make that, sense. Uh, that argument's been de- like, yeah. debunked for Completely. so long. Completely. But the closer you get to women's bodies, the harder the argument gets. Cause they're like, no, 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 no. That's, it's more than you guys think. We, we know what we're talking about. I'm like, yeah. so you, know more about the skin i'm living in day in day out right tell me how that works where's your fucking science on that well and bringing up a good point science because what is our government (laughs) kind of completely led by religion yep uh separation of church and state does not truly exist in this country sadly and it's really really disheartening that these completely ridiculous right-wing like religious values are oppressing women's bodies and completely derailing a sense of self or personhood choice and safety and i love and i mean and not to call out any of this because day in day out i'm on facebook looking at all these fucking news articles and this one person pointed out that was like every time you see you know a women's rights bill that's led by a government official Mm-hmm. And it has to do with women. All the women standing behind them are cis, white, females. Oh, yeah. Standing behind a group of cis, white families mm-hmm. who are just are under the religion of God. Absolutely. Every single time. Look at any kind of sign. You go to any newscast. Mm-hmm. Bring it up. Go to any kind of like like government, like women's, mm-hmm. like legality, like legal signing. And then mm-hmm. go watch the newscast. And tell me not if you mm-hmm. see like... A trans family behind them or a person uh, like like a family from india or from china mm-hmm. or like or young women who are from like indonesia oh, or argentina yeah, tell me if you see like a, like tell me if you see any marginalized individual in any of these law signings no it is the family of cis hetero like people mm-hmm. and uh, government officials under the word of god this western civilization mm-hmm. garbage that we're trying is. to move away from and it does not protect the individual or the family you can't tell me you care about people when when your par your, when your paradigm like your yeah. your like your paradigm is like sh- like on tunnel vision on just one particular group of people socialized medicine would actually help would actually save lives would actually help people get out of debt be able to care for their families be able to care for themselves not go completely bankrupt and have to take out GoFundMe's if they have cancer and need to afford chemo which by the way is happening to a friend of mine yes who is. 34 years old with a five-year-old daughter and she has stage four breast cancer and she's raising money through GoFundMe because of her medical bills. So don't tell me you care about her or her child when she can't afford to get chemo. Yep. Like that, it does not compute. It doesn't make sense. So I'm livid. (laughs) Yeah, we're all livid. I mean, and I think it's, this is a great reality break from all of our other catch-up podcasts because the last four episodes, I feel like, I mean, we've talked about a lot of 
things happen day in, day out. But I've also yeah. we've talked about a lot of good things that happen out there. And there still are. There's, there's been a lot of good things that have happened. There's a lot more protective care out there. There's like, we have pride. We have, there's more benefits ever since yes. the Floyd incidents. Yes. And there's absolutely. still no justice for Brianna Taylor. Nope. But I mean, we have had people arrested. We've we had have, protests. we've had, we've had like police put behind bars, but all in all, it's still not enough. And you know, the way things are going, it'll still never be enough. It's not enough. And it, and it's, it's hard to relay exactly how that feels. You know, you see something, even if I'm not now directly affected by being able to get pregnant, first of all, like just taking that specifically for a second, I'm still completely affected for everyone else that this impacts, for myself thinking about what would that mean for me if I was if I was a prisoner, if I got pregnant and I was a prisoner, knowing that it might kill me, you know, what does that mean? What does my society think of me? Well, they don't think anything. Well, of instead you. of what about all the people <laughs> that are in prison that like because mm -hmm. marijuana is legal. Oh yeah. <laughs> we just played we just played the Hemfest yeah. charity and well, they're all at still the behind bars. So. They're also behind bars. And yeah. I'm like meanwhile like we're playing a Hempfest event and I that's one thing I'm shame shame on me. I should have said I didn't I forgot to say that cuz all the emotions and shit going on, but like I should have said also like free all the people who are fucking behind bars right now because it is legal. Oh yeah, and they they did have like there were had, charities. I think there, there there was some people to get fighting people. for this. This yeah. one guy had been in prison for twenty five years. Yep, we met for him. This three strikes count that was literally only marijuana. Yep. So don't tell me that you're pro life. And he was such a beautiful. So I talked to him. He, he was, was there. He had a bunch of flyers in front of him, oh, and he just God. looked like I could uh, see that he just saw twenty five years of absolute hell for things that people are doing day and like just on their daily lives. Then it's no big deal anymore. Yeah. Where I was like, this is how it should have been, but yet yeah, this guy had to like his whole life is now different well, and we and, should be and, taking and care it, of him and, and, it, and it will always be and it, yeah we should be taking but care we're of not him. and nope. so again like our and if he veterans dies, if, and if he dies in the street in the next two years i was just like you know oh which yeah that's what i'm saying tent cities don't tell me that you're pro-life <laughs> yeah all these people out trans on the people streets. or mm -hmm. that trans people don't have medical care or trans mm -hmm. bodies that can't be treated with respect when they go for pregnancies or trans women when they just want to i don't know maybe just date a single guy because maybe they think that doing that's a good idea Right? Or maybe that's not so safe. <laughs> I think I'm just going to stick to dating girls because it's just not safe out there. Anyway, segue. Segue. So we are going to take a little break from this and we are going to do... Okay, wait. No, no, no. Don't even think that I forgot about what happened at the crocodile because I did not. No, no we're, we're going to come back. We bet because some things popped out. Okay, listen, we're gonna come back to that, <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna do the segue into um uh, of the her t shirt. Okay, excuse you. We're gonna do our litter box. So let's do the litter box. Where's the scraper? Okay. Excuse me, I gotta. Oh yeah, the scraper. <laughs> welcome to the litter box. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So our litter box band of the month is. Crimson Riot! Crimson Riot! And led by your former... So my former cat crush of last week was Roxy Gunn. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, that was last week. But now they are the band of the month. Crimson Riot, who we played with at Tony V's Garage. So much fun. They were so fun. I, so fun! I got a patch. I have to put on my we jacket. We have to put the patch on, I know, yes. I, know, I, know, I, know. Um, I did talk last week about the megaphone song. Yes. So we are going to play that song for you. And that is happening now. Right now!
Oh god, that was looking so cool. Oh, the megaphone. Like, I was like, sorry, Shh, sorry, sorry. No, we can't get. We can't do that for you. Sorry. Shh, no, sorry. We can't do that for you. Um. Oh my god. Yeah. Yes. Ah. Oh, I love you, Roxy. And she is so cool. So Crimson Riot. Oh. More than cool. Okay. We're gonna, we're gonna play again. Let me tell you how long she was talking to me about Roxy. Okay, wait, so stop. No, no, no. <laughs> That's not what this is. Listen. They're just really cool. Whatever. But you're okay. also the band of the month for the next podcast. I know, yeah. <laughs> um Okay, and now we're gonna go into Angie. <gasps> yeah. Cat Angie. <laughs> Welcome to Cat in Ooh. Okay, so who's going to start? I'll start. Okay, go ahead. Maya. <laughs> what happened to the last name? <laughs> no, we can, okay, so here's here's where we were. Oh my god. What? <laughs> You're just like, Maya! We were playing the Factory Lux last year. Brittany's birthday. Brittany Lunas, who's like a photographer, we will post the picture of us in the bathroom. Yes, Brittany. Because it was awesome and I love it. We were at Jupiter and playing with some pinball machines. Anywho. So, we were at the Factory Lux and Stereo Sauna was a band back then that I didn't know anything about them. And then all of a sudden my mind was blown. Like, here comes my... And she has her combat boots. And the, and the denim jacket, right? The denim jacket oh, yeah. with oh. the glasses. I know. And like the like the neon colors going on, like on her t shirt. And I was like screaming, like rocking. And then but she also shouted hella, out Kitty Junk. But also hella chill at the same time. And she's like, so cool. She's it's like, not even funny. A couple times, like, she just put her like her foot up on the monitor. And she, the, like, way, oh, the way she's just like, hella chill. Just like, but also, like, not chill, but like chill. You know what I mean? Chill. It's just. Yeah. She, oh, she has the vibe. She has the fucking It was vibes. vibes. She has the vibes. It was such vibes. I was like, this person's so cool. <laughs> like, one of those high school moments where you see, like, a rock star or something, and you're, you know, this little nerd, and you're like, oh, my God. Dream with us. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, my God. It's like, too cool to talk to you. Oh, it was so much fun, and then which is funny because I don't think we did <laughs> talk to Maya. We were kind of I just like, like we were uh, we were kind of like hopping around, like oh, 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 like waving and scooting. We were like <laughs> we like trotting over to the bar. We just like okay, bye. <laughs> That's from literally her. what happened. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> Ugh, whatever. And <sighs> so I love it though. Uh, super cool. And basically, I've been th- I've thought about that. Like that image has been in my head for months oh yeah she's been talking about it forever i'm just like, like, will, it's like will you stop with a the weird amount the fact probably, factory maya like oh my goodness like a weird amount of times like probably indecent <laughs> oh no angie oh, <laughs> i just no. made it i just made it weird oh yes you did. whoops okay so anyway, <laughs> anyway. so my cat crush this week oh god I she's already been my is. crush before but then that, that's okay. the whole thing but I first met her at the Skylark. She was making us drinks with my old yeah, band. I've known her for years. Was. My cat crush this week is Sarah Mako. Ow! She's a guitar player, singer. All around cutie vibe. She doesn't really sing as much anymore because she's had some vocal issues, which I commend her for. And I think mm. she is the bravest motherfucker out there for dealing with that because I would literally be having a massive panic attack. So... Yeah, my heart goes out for her and everything she does. She's also in the band Sprig. Wee. She makes fantastic drinks. She's an amazing bar trust. Just a really kind soul and gentle. Amazing. Um, she was literally just, she was just making a petition to save a tree in her neighborhood. Um, super oh, activist. Sweetie. Like, I just, yeah, I love everything about her. She's just, yeah. Okay, so. She's always glowing and smiling and just, yeah. Sarah was the actual crush last year. Like, she was the thing. Last Whatever, year. that's only that one time we played a Skylark and I'm just like, I was like, so are you like, I was like, did it hurt it was when you fell from heaven? It was a whole thing. <laughs> with her, like, her hair like, half this so, color like, half and that color. hair, and I was like, purple lavender, and yeah, she's, she's so around. cool. Yeah. She's super cool. And 
Yeah, she's super sweet, and she found my dumpster phone. Oh, yeah. So, we, so yeah, we've played at Skylark multiple times, and, yeah, she's just always been there. Like, we're either working the door or just, like, part of the Skylark family. She's, she's a bar awesome. trust. She's just awesome, and she's just a fabulous musician, so... Yeah, and I was doing my little, like, detective thing to find out if she was single last year, and it was a whole thing. Oh, my God. Because that's what happens. Like, Ryan well, no, tells me. That, when, we, when we played at Skylark, so, don't even go there. Don't <laughs> even go there. Sarah, don't listen to her. She's full of shit. Anywho. Anywho. The point is, yes. is that this last time round, last year when we played at Skylark, Angie lost her fucking, or it wasn't even last year. I no, it was like a month ago. It was like, yeah, oh, God, no, it was like. <laughs> it's like two months ago now. No, oh, God. My so, phone has been there forever. I know. We got... Oh, we were having a party there. Who were we playing with that night? Was it the... Par- it was... No. Nope. They were in the audience, though. Oh, yeah. They were in the... Yeah, Peregrine were in the audience. Who... Yeah. Who, that was, oh, you know... Who was it? Um, oh, Prismia. Prismia. It was Prismia and Buried Blonde. And Buried Blonde. Oh. Who were fabulous Buried Blonde. Yeah, buried Blonde is off Whippy Island. Prismia, I know you were fabulous. I just, like, I don't super recall because then I was drinking more. Yeah. So at some point I get home mm-hmm. and Angie's or we're driving home and Angie's like, I don't know where my phone is. It's gone. She had to order a new one. And then finally Sarah found it at the dumpster. <laughs> oh. Bottom of the dumpster. at Skylar. Skylar. And she was like, I don't know how this happened because the trash has already been emptied this week. And they were looking everywhere. And then a few days later, they're like, so we saw the kitty junk sticker like <laughs> popping up out of the like, trash. Like, so, kitty, so kitty junk was in the trash because we are trash. And I was like, ah, oh, fits. So it's thank fun. you, Sarah, once again for finding are coming. phone. We are coming. We're coming back to the Skylark <laughs> with our other bands. We will come to claim the phone. Like so, that no, is happening. We're, we're coming back with our other band, Atrocity Girl on the 12th. No, that was rescheduled to what? August due to the very sad. Oh, that's right. Recent loss. Yes, they lost. They lost one of their. Uh, they lost one of their staff members, Chris. Yeah. And that and has been a tragedy because he's also fall. He's been. I followed him since my very beginning band. Since when I got back in the Seattle scene, he's always been there. And so our hearts yeah, go out to the Skylark this absolutely. week, and also because Sarah is the cat heat for me. Aww. But yeah. All the Skylark family is amazing. Please yeah. support Skylark West Seattle. They really need it right now. Absolutely. They could use the help. And yeah, that's it. End of segment. Okay. Before we get back to the crocodile, I'm going to get us some drinks. Okay. So I'll tell you what happened. The okay. Can you like maybe wait till I get back? <laughs> just, just give me a second. It's going to be a minute. I know. I'm going to just tell them a little bit about what happened. So Ryan... Okay, there had been some drinks happening, right? You better not spill the guts. I'm, okay. So let's just say... Things were rough. <laughs> like dogs say, rough. Like we were being kind of booted off stage super, super fast. I might add, I was backlining drums for all the bands that came before and after. And so when it was time for the very last act, who was the DJ to go on stage, the sound guy was like, get your shit off the stage like super super quickly i had to break down the drums nobody else was helping like no i I mean from the other bands like the other bands had gone home you know before the dj and i was like okay so i have to break all the stuff down that i was like helping the venue with by supplying them for all the bands and he's like just get it off we don't care just take it off the stage like he needs to go on and i mean Jesus, give me five seconds to take down the stands and blah, blah, blah. And I thought it was an inordinate amount of pressure being put on Kitty Junk as the two girls, by the way, like the only girls of the entire night. And all of a sudden, the sound guy's yelling at us to get off the stage when we're, that's exactly what we're doing. We're taking all of our stuff. We're two people. (gasps) Thank you. Well, I mean, I don't even have that much gear. I'm back, by the way. I was making a mm-hmm. drink in the kitchen. Yeah, I had my... Uh, if anyone's seen Kitty Junk, I did bring an extra HT club that I have, but I only had my Fender and my bass rig, and I always play. So, yeah, I caught her, like him yelling at Angie, and then I got pissed. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't care if you have a dick between your legs or a hot dog or a fucking stick corn dog on a <laughs> stick. I don't care what's between <laughs> your leg, bro. Oh, I was no. like, don't. Do not. And I don't care if you're the legendary crocodile thing. in Seattle. Don't treat my bandmates like that. This guy, Jeez. this rapper gets up, starts rapping. And I, I mean, and I get respecting music. I get respecting bands. Sure. We've played with enough bands. I played with enough bands. So you can call me out individually if you want. I don't care. 
catch that promise. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I was like, don't treat bandmates like that. I was like, yeah. I treat everyone I play. But when he gets up stage, walks past us, and then he starts sexualizing and rapping about women's bodies. Yeah, come on. Tied into that. And I'm like, dude, she's like, you're going to boot us off stage? Yeah. For a hemp fest charity event who's trying to fight legalizations, right. trying to, like, in, in, in its own right, like, yeah. legalize weed. Help trying people to, in trying prison. Trying to help people. Yeah. You're going to come, come up here and start rapping endlessly at the end of the night after all the bands that we tried to help went home already. And yep. people are trying to shuffle out the door. And you're going to tell us to get out of the way and start rapping about women's bodies. I got pissed. Yeah. And, it like, honestly, I <laughs> he was, like, a whole different story. The sound guy was being really rude. He was being super pushy. And then... The next thing I know, we're backstage, and it was already super tense. And then I see Ryan just, like, hauling ass back up the stairs onto the stage during his set. And what happened, Ryan? So I, like, I kind of, I turned I turned around, and I started twerking to the crowd, and I just, and I know most people couldn't hear me because the crocodile is really raised. You can't really hear, like, yeah. like incoherent speech when, like, music's bumping. But as loud as I could, I said, if you like women, let me shake my fucking ass for you. So I started twerking, and then I turned around real quick, and as fast as I could, I flashed both my tits. Yeah, she did. And then I picked up Auntie's, you know, the little, what are those called? The tom legs? Yeah. After I put my tits away, I picked up Auntie's tom legs. I licked the tom legs. Yeah, she did. And then I took took the Tom and I walked off stage and I started like, I just kept loading more gear. I was like, Oh, that happened. And it was great. Cause like, <laughs> I mean, we were back. sitting, we were sitting in the back and I was like, dude, if they 86, that's fine. Oh, it's like, fine with it. The only staff there, the only, pe- the only people left there were just the hemp, the hemp fest, uh, charity staff. And I already told them, I was like, Hey, here's what I did. And, um, we were being treated like shit. So sorry, dude. <laughs> so funny because they were like um angie like can you go get ryan on stage and i was like what am i gonna do so i'm like walking up there and ryan's up there twerking the dude's up there rapping the sound guy is already pissed at me so i just like look out into the audience and i'm like no nah, screw here, this here, <laughs> just here's, like walk back here, down the stairs here's where this this kind of thing when i do this i was like it's not about respecting bands or sound or, or it's, it's, it's not it's not respecting sound engineers or venues or people these are statements and things that people have made over the years whether you're bikini kill if you're pussy riot if you're the luna chicks yeah. if you're fucking joan jett if you're fucking janice Joplin, if you're cindy lopper like these are all the women who have made it who are making statements with their bodies and being like you know what i'm not gonna be treated like this we will not be treated like this and i'm like you know if that takes us getting 86 from anything or anyone wants to i don't yeah. think we will if we do great you can send me that in writing but you know what the point is i was like we will not be treated like that and if we are i'm gonna make it known Oh my god! And so and this this is like I think this is my feminist battle cry. Is like that's I why I would. It. It's like totally I'm okay with saying this on, on our personal podcast because I'm like if you listen to this and you hear it, yes, I'm gonna tell you. I was like because I'm standing up for all the fucking women's activist rights who are just like no, dude, fuck you. For the last Jeez, time, that crowd was lucky. Like they know it, and I was. What did they think I was gonna do? I was like, I support what Ryan's doing. First of all, I agree, and I don't care. And this is why I love from this Kitty Junk like, because I'm giving you a hug. Oh my god! Yay. I did not care if we were canceled from the crocodile. I love. I was like, screw it. Yeah, this is the best thing you can have is just bandmates <laughs> who like whether because there's so many. Every time I see a feminist band, the thing that chills my bones the most about it is not just the epic music, but is when I read their the behind the scenes stories and I'm like, they did what? Mm, mm-hmm. Whether if if they held hands and they like yeah. blocked the entrance to a venue, yes. or if they like showed their asses, That's or they just saying. like painted their tits and walked around the city. Whatever I read about feminist history, oh, it pumps me up. I'm like, hell yeah, oh, fuck yes. I'm like, fuck yes. Oh dude. my god, and I think that it was a good cause. And by the way, like. Hempfest supported us. Of course. So thank you, Yvonne and Jessica. So hopefully, I don't know, I don't want this to go viral and be like, oh my God. But if it does, oops. We'll just make it it a TikTok. It's going to go viral because in the description, I'm going to write Ryan's boobs. Oh my God. No. (laughs) I'm going to tag it. Ryan's boobs. Boobs. I mean, they've they've come out at a couple of shows now for statement reasons and... And And other reasons. I mean... I've seen them at least 10 times at this point. But oh, <laughs> now that we're back to our yeah. trans debate, oh, I guess oh, like, yeah. here's the thing I told Angie in the back. I was so livid. Here's how I diffused it. I'm like, you can't, you can't only acknowledge my existence when it's convenient to you. Right. And that's what I find what happens being trans women a lot. I was like, if someone wants to objectify me or treat me a certain way mm-hmm. because women are quote weak, then they'll use my womanhood 
yeah to oppress me like so but it's but but then when it's like an uncomfortable situation like that guy posted on his facebook when it's like oh trans woman's never gonna hit on me i'm never gonna fall for a trap and i go oh i was like that is disgusting Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. if it's something like well i was like so you don't want to believe in my identity but then you get mad at me for showing my chest which every guy's allowed to do yeah exactly i I don't i don't get where you're not believing in me but you do believe in me i'm Mm -hmm. a little confused because they're uncomfortable yeah i was like do you want to elaborate on where you draw the line of where i exist but only when it's convenient for you to oppress me because you make them feel things oh i i I make their i'm scared i make their heart we interrupt this broadcast to let you know that this podcast is sponsored by real women real women for your hot dogs not Hot dogs dressed as buns. Now back to your regularly scheduled broadcast. Thank you. The hell is happening with that? I mean, we're talking about trans I'm rights and die. fucking abortion and women's bodies. Like, stop, oh, stop buns, using, though, stop using, buns. stop using women's bodies, even in situations where, where, where in situations where it doesn't even fucking apply anymore. You know for anything, just stop for using anything. them. Just stop using them. Yeah, stop. Just stop using stop. them. Stop. Stop. I would love that. Okay, that reminds me. So I was in Boston. Was it, it was wicked funny. And she and, and you saw my video on on the Instagrams where she left me and I was sad. <laughs> I like half expected you to pop up in my luggage. I was trying to figure a way to make magic happen. I was like <laughs> putting like I was lighting candles. I'm like, how do I just like oh my God, yes. how do I just like bust in and it didn't work. Bust in. It didn't work. Ready, okay. cockies, bust in. And yes. it didn't work. It didn't work. Yes. That's so cute. Like Fenway, though, Red Sox. We won the day that I was there. <gasps> I brought the magic. Anyway. <laughs> oh, she did. Yes, the kitty junk. Saw Exodus. Amazing. However. <gasps> oh, I know where this is going. Okay. Okay. okay yeah. No, no. Okay. Let me hop out. Of my... Okay, hold on. I'm hopping out of my chair. She texted me this and I was. Oh, yeah. Ooh, story so, time. Boston is, it's a big city. So you, you get a lot of, like, progressive people. You know, it's a, it's a city. So you get, like, a mixture. But more often than not, you get some acceptance Hmm, we took a train to Worcester an hour and a half outside of Boston to Godsmack's hometown of Worcester to see Godsmack and uh wage war wait am I I, I supposed to say woo woo Worcester (laughs) I mean am I supposed to say Worcester am I supposed to say woo for I think they say Worcester no I'm saying am I supposed to say woo for Godsmack or are we not doing that oh that's I mean I went I went it was a whole thing we're not doing that like Anyway, and so I went to the, like, place, and it was Wage War, um, a band that I thought was an all-girl band that I was so stoked about, but they were, like, sad emo boys, so whatever. (sighs) And... (laughs) But their eyeliner was probably spot on, wasn't it? It really was. Jesus. Though. The hair. The one bang. I know they're with getting, the mohawk the in the back. Boys are, oh god, they're killing it lately. I mean, I don't know. With what the do. painted on pants, Jesus, I, yeah, I with that whole thing. I don't thing. know what to do with them. So I kind of want to go back to being the emo boy. I, oh my god, <laughs> it was so funny though. Oh my goodness. Oh no. Uh, it was, oh no. It was so funny. The thing that I loved, obviously, was I was in like the line line of sight for the drum kit. Loved that. But then something happened during Godsmack's set where they were playing all the hits and I was like, yeah, I remember this on the radio and I was in middle school. <laughs> Wee! And... Oh, yeah, because I remember listening to Voodoo. And, voodoo, like, right? Voodoo yeah. was a thing. Oh, though. man. It, uh, yeah, because I had Godsmack too when I was a kid. I forgot. Oh, yeah. I had along with Corn and Slipknot yeah. and like Limp Bizkit. All, all the boy metal bands. Okay. Also, by the way, can, interjection real quick. Corn, though, where, yes. where, where was the Maybe. female new metal bands other than Flyleaf and Don't Say Evanescence? Other than that, where... Don't say Evanescence. Don't say Evanescence and Fireleaf. But other than that, where were all the all-female new metal groups? I'm going to leave you with that. Go ahead. Continue. Mm-hmm. Okay. Other than Kitty, Mercedes, marry me. Kitty. <laughs> Morgan. Morgan, we love you. Oh, my God. Whee! Okay. We have, so, we have to check Kitty on this. I know. It's so true. But... It was, like, about the time of night they had done, like, nine super, you know, hard, heavy songs. And then it was like, okay, this is the time of night where there's going to be, like, a slower song or a, some type of ballady, you know, just, like, a break. It could have just ended there with, like, hey, we're going to slow it down for a minute. Like, take out your lights or, hey, let's all come together for Worcester, blah, 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 hometown. It could have been that. Nope. Here's how it went down. Hey, Worcester, like, we're seeing a lot of people out there that we didn't see when we were getting popular. The ladies! (laughs) Don't worry. 
We know that they're just a little bit weaker than we are, but we love them anyway. So <gasps> we're going to take away all the masculine stuff up here, like the fire and the loud noises. We're going to slow it down and give you one for the ladies. And then they played a slow song. Did you, did they actually say it like this? No, they, said, they said it like the actually just, just like, like that. that. That is so disgusting. I don't have any records anymore, but if I did, I wish I did so I could take gasoline to them right now and burn them. I almost... With the fire that I actually fucking yeah. like. <laughs> was... I almost lost it. I was like, first of all, what the fuck? as a lady... Um, I want to God smack your bitch up. Like, yeah, like, I don't want you to play a slow song. Like, as a lady, um, stop excuse me, being a puss. And like, junk, which, every, <laughs> which we actually just got tonight a show because we were too heavy. So yeah. let me give you that, but... Keep like, going. can we not slow it can down? We, can we not? Like, how about that? I want to keep things fucking loud. But it was the the way that he was like, oh, we see ladies in the concert. Like, and we didn't see ladies. Oh, like, did Christopher Columbus not bring ladies yeah. here until the 90s? We didn't read that in our history books. And it was so ridiculous. Because it's like, you know why, like, women feel more comfortable coming to shows now? Because there's better security and people aren't as handsy. I mean, they can be, but there's no, like they, a yeah, lot better, are. but there's a lot better, especially in the seats, security. And there were female security guards, which I really appreciated. And like, there was better lighting and there were people outside of the bathroom. So, you know what? As, as a woman, like, yeah, I feel safer going into bigger venues where I didn't even like 20 years ago. It can that's be how it felt super when we, shady. That's, that's how it felt when we, when we went and saw um, Uncle Austin and King Buffalo at Showbox. Yeah. Like we had a female security guard right there by the bathroom. Yep. All the five bars that are there at the Showbox. Yeah. And man, I even went past the yellow line to watch the band. He was even, he caught me, he came back and he was like, excuse me, ma'am. He's like, would yep. you please go over here? And I go, oh, sorry. Yeah. Felt really safe there. It was really well lit. That's what I mean. So it's like, don't pretend like, oh, ladies happen to be interested in Godsmack in the year 2022 out of nowhere. And, oh because, my and because of that, we're going to play you a slow song. A ballad. There's a show that in the last 20 years, Godsmack, you haven't learned jack shit. Okay, but they actually said we're going to not do the masculine things. We're not going to play our heavy guitars and we're not going to have the pyrotechnics. Like, Ew. we're going to like stop the masculine stuff for Just a second. Just for all the ladies listening to this podcast if you come to a kitty junk show i promise you that yes you will have pyrotechnics yes i will be playing my loud guitar uh -huh. and angie will be beaten is some skins. gonna be beating some skins <laughs> and also i'm gonna have her like yeah. i know right at this point i'm just like I'm are you kidding give me? her a kazoo that catches on fire kazoo god That's damn true. it what the hell and so yeah and then they're like playing their song and then they went back into the whole band and, and at first they were like yeah now show me like <laughs> it was so stupid though because then they're like show me your women like uh, it was like they knew it was like show me your women like the women that came with their boyfriends and they were like put them on your shoulders and so then all of a sudden it's like they were encouraging women to like flash their boobs and i'm like well this isn't positive at all anymore so i don't know what's happening here with your slow song and your boobs but anyway can we get back to some heavy guitar and some drums? Because this conversation went off the rails. Thanks a lot. And so it was now we're back so to rock weird. and sexualization. What a vicious cycle this is. I was like, oh god. And I was so waiting for it because it's like it was one of those. It was the bro show, like it was. But you know what? I happen to think it's super fun music, and that's a shame because <sighs> no, no, back, no, no, back up. This is when you read the Kitty Junk statement. Yeah, what says. That Ryan and Angie are working to make the rock world more inclusive. Yep. This is what we mean. This is what we mean when we say like, oh, we're not sexy babies for you to look at and sexually objectify when we're on stage. No, dude. That's why like yeah. when I get on stage, like no guy's going to come up to me like, hey, you want to go on a date after a show? No, because I've just fucking rocked his dick off his fucking body. And he's just really scared yeah. of me. And he's like, ew, I don't think I want to date a woman who's not quiet and meek and wants to listen to me and just wants to listen to me talk all day about how I love my woman. She's my arm candy. No, dude, we're not doing that anymore. And you know what's funny is, like, I actually preferred Exodus and Testament because, like, everybody was, like, 60 years old <laughs> with their jean jackets and their back patches. And I was like, yeah, man, like, we could just enjoy some music and everyone's, like, tired at 9 p.m. I'll take but, it. Uh, but I, I have to ask, I gotta ask a question. You know, I love that when you said the word, or the phrase bro, bro show, mm -hmm. because, like, when you say, like, you have an all-ladies night, oh, like, I, I hate, like, that's why as a woman, I was like, like, you know, when you think about, like, going to a baby shower and shit, some women out there cringe. Because it's just like, you know what? Well, 
when you say baby shower, and that's why I love that so many women's parties have changed over the years. I was like, when a woman shows, like, like has a wedding, mm-hmm. like how many weddings have you seen where they've actually gone to a rock show or a woman, yeah. a woman oh, does, totally. I've seen this a lot and it makes me happy. Like when a woman has a wedding or a wedding like party, it's like, it's what she wants to do. Like, and I've seen things happen where it's like at a rock show yes. or they go hiking or they do a photo shoot or something that they want to do. They don't I do the typical that. like thing where she's like, oh, we're going to have a baby shower like it's desperate housewives and we're gonna do that thing where there's drama and then the men are outside talking about tools and the corvette and how he's gonna get a lambo one day and get a mansion in palm springs and he's also gonna get a promotion at his workshop that's what i'm saying like that kind of shit you can burn that with the gasoline with the rest of the godsmack albums you can burn all of that because like i like when things are redefined so when you talk about mm-hmm. ladies night dude ladies night like, it's not, like, I want to stop the divide between the two, like, where it's, like, the bro show mm-hmm. and the lady show. Which it always is, though. Where it's, like, dude, men can come to the lady, shoot, l- lady show, too, if they want, because I want to change the notion where it's, like, it's not just soft anymore. Mm-hmm. I was, like, I've seen, like, you know, and I love the boys who are fighting amongst the boys these days. I've heard this word thrown around lately. Soy boys. Oh my god! Yeah. So all these indie folk rockers and boys yep. in Seattle so who nice. play indie, where it's just like, oh, I'm not gonna go to that little soy boy show. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is where you start to get into like, oh, well, there are actually decent men or who are respectable in Seattle or in any place in the world, but there's also still the bro culture, and that in and of itself oh, is the toxicity. That's like the cis white man culture. Oh, and that uh, I was in Worcester an hour and a half. By train out of Boston. Yeah. Like, I fully walked in there being like, well, <laughs> might not come back from this one, but we're just going to give it a whirl. And it was awkward as hell. However, I still like the music, like, I mean, of the of that genre. It's super fun. It's, it's I've always loved new metal that's in, what I'm saying. in high like, school. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I, I like the metal. I love it. And what I hate is that men, you know, quote, men's music is universal. It's thought of as universal. Music by women is thought of as music for women. And I hate that division. And it still happens to us frequently with a female singer. Like, oh, we need to find other bands with female singers uh, yeah. for a bill for you. I think that happened with the first Kitty Junk show where we mentioned someone there. Right. And, the, and the first thing they responded with was, oh, I think we have an all-female night coming up. And I'm like, no, no, no. I don't want to be on an all-female bill. It's ridiculous. I was like, and, and and with that being said, I was like, that doesn't mean that, like, for example, May 15th, y'all can come to the Ballard Sunset. We are playing with Always Naked, Female Fronted, and Creamsicle, Female Fronted, with Lacey Quincy oh, and yeah. uh, Skylar Steffi, both, I think, which have been cat chats yeah, and cat crushes have. in this mm, podcast. Yes, they have. So we're going to do that night. And that night wasn't like, I didn't call up uh, Lacey and Skylar and be like, hey, girls, girls nice. um, do you need to put your babies to bed? Because I'd really like, I'd really like it if you would come and do quiet girl songs with me at, at the sunset on May 15th, because it's going to be this, oh, ladies this night. podcast has been interrupted. This podcast is brought to you by no. real women. No. Real women. No. Not hot dogs dressed as buns. <laughs> now back to your scheduled podcast. Thank you. Hot dogs dressed as buns. Hot dogs dressed as buns. This is my new favorite thing ever. Hot dogs dressed as buns. That's, yeah, if it, you know it, you know it. <laughs> So, but yeah, so like we didn't, we didn't get together and just like, oh, let's make this powerful women's night. No, dude, there's bros in these bands too. And the, and the guys that play, I would hope to think that the boys that play in these bands yeah. respect the women as equals, not as, oh, like female fronted. It's okay. Well, and we've talked, we've talked about this. Like, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay to have pride, feel. pride in your gender and pride in, oh, of course. In, in your womanhood. Just, it's okay. It's okay to have pride oh, in a man. But once you make it toxic, mm-hmm. y'all bets are off. Like you, oh, fu- you, you already fucked it up. Once it's competitive as, like, this versus that. Like, oh, it's me versus Or, it, or this will always be better than this because mm-hmm. it's a hot dog, not a bun. Hot dog, not a bun. So, is that the name of the podcast, hot by the way? Because we were talking about it earlier. I think it's, <laughs> sorry, I think it's, hot, yeah. dog, I think it's hot dog dressed as buns. Like, this is my new favorite thing to say. Yeah. Hot dog dressed as a bun. Anyway, how long has this been going? About an hour? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, I know. We're going to wrap up. However, but I did want to say, like, came back from it. Oh, no, she's here. I made sure that if anything <laughs> yeah. happened, I would have my ass up there and I would have... Oh, I was, like, it, keeping yeah. them updated, too. Yeah, no, no. I was getting constant, <laughs> so like, 30-minute 30, 30, right 30 update. I was like, I need yeah. I need your text from your ass every 30 minutes. Like, it was hilarious, too. I, I'm, I'm getting a ticket. I'm going to fly out there right now. Best ever. 
Uh, it was super fun though. So. Um, and then, and then, honestly, it was like a little bit of escape until the horrible news that I came home to, and it's been on my mind ever since. And I think for for everyone out there, just know that it's okay to take some time for self care, for a bath, for some alone time, for anything you you know, for reading or or listening to music or playing music. And if you just need to like unplug for a while, it's totally fine. It's understandable. Things are overwhelming right now. There's a lot of emotions yeah. in the air. Like we're with you. And I was about to lose myself there for a minute because it was a really stressful week. People have just been so mean. I just made a post on my Facebook today about like I'm just seeing so much hate or and so much political nonsense mm -hmm. and garbage and like rough lives for everyone on on, on a day to day scale. And just yeah. I'm so sorry for everyone. I'm like this is just fucking terrible and it's just like i thought that coming out of the pandemic things would get better but i feel like there's something getting worse and i just oh my god and here we are in 2022 <laughs> 2022 baby world's changing we're brought to a new age of whatever the fuck yeah basically so what kj is gonna do about it well well yeah there was a woman on her like um i think a woman who was like in terms of like the abortion ban i think she was like do something like go to the women's right march so there's, I think I forgot it's gonna be in July. I'll reshare it on the on the yeah, we'll kitty we'll, on the kitty junk page. But we'll there is um there's gonna be a women's rights march. And also, I tell everyone every day about kitty junk is activism. I was like, if you come to a kitty junk show and you support us and you support activism, like using your voice, singing mm -hmm. out your frustrations, whether you sing along or you relate to a song, whether it's rage for domestic violence, whether it's reload for suicide awareness, or we play sassy frass. It's just about being silly and being okay with yourself, mm -hmm. being just like totally obnoxious or whether you sing about like missing about my like about my mother's cancer like anything you sing about like that is our activism as we come out sing about our lives we try to help relate to you and just spread the word about like that there yes. that, that we are all in this together so come to kitty jung show because we will we want to light shit up with you and also i would say never underestimate the power of escapism you know for a two-hour show you can also just come and dance and party and that's fine just take your mind off of things for a while. Have a drink. You know what? I bought or a Bret Hart pantsuit by accident. Not totally by accident, oh, but it was kind of my by accident. God. So because I love the Hart Foundation from 1980s WWF, and yes. I said to myself at 2 a.m., what are Bret Hart's pants? Like, what does that look like? So I Googled Bret Hart pants. And they were perfect. Like, I could not believe how perfect this outfit <laughs> like, is for her. And I'm a little freaked out. And Amazon, for money that went on my credit card, Oops. that I've exceeded the limit. We're not going to talk about that right now. Because it was for Bret Hart pants. It's for Bret Hart pants. And I was like, that's what I need in my life to get me through these dark times. <laughs> and I bought myself a new amp lately. And we have new sunglasses. And we have new sunglasses coming. We bought new merch for the show. So Kitty Junks had self-care too. So also, like Ryan doesn't know this yet, but she's going to be wearing a suit. Like we're going to get her a matching suit. But then I'm going to be putting the Heart Foundation theme song from the 80s over the loudspeakers so that for our KJ show, we can come in as the tag team. Oh my. With our heart pants. God. So we're going to have heart pants and the Heart Foundation theme. And we're going to come out and rock. That's what's happening. <laughs> oh my God. Is this happening soon? It like for sure needs to happen ASAP. Okay, so the seventh, Bad Jimmy's. Go buy the pink bathing suit that would like match and let's go. Okay, we're gonna do that before the show. Yep, and I'm gonna Bang. wear a pink bathing suit next to Angie. <laughs> yeah. And be all sassy, my pink onesie. Oh <laughs> my god, this is happening. Oh it's, my happening. God, it's happening. It's happening. Okay, and like. So come to Bad Jimmy's to see us like Team Bret Hart. Okay, but this may be out after that because it's like two days away. Oh, right. Well, but if not. But if not, still. Come, but if not. Come to the sunset on the 15th, if you're local. Also the Kraken um, on the 20th. Kraken on the 20th. We're going to be at the Fun House on the 10th. Oh, wait. We're going to... Yeah, that's right. And then, we're, the and, and then we're also going to be at Real Art Tacoma on the 14th. It's a whole weekend, guys. Like So you have plenty of shows to pick from. So, Kitty Junk. Sassy. I need more booze. <laughs> yeah, me too.